Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at Brentwood United Methodist Church. We're so glad to have you joining us here in person or online this morning. My name is Jonathan Anderson. I serve as the Director of Adult Discipleship here at the church. And we're, we're glad to have you. We're glad to have a lot of children here this morning. And later in the service, we're going to be presenting Bibles to our third graders and our four-year-olds. We're always thankful to have the student choir with us and for your presence. If you are new here, we'd love for you to fill out the guest card in the pew back in front of you. Place that in the offering plate later in the service as your gift to us. That will help us connect with you beyond Sunday morning. And also want to draw your attention to a few announcements in the bulletin. One is that our Only Together conference is happening next Saturday here at the church. And this is a conference that our RMM ministry, Refugee and Migrant Ministry, is partnering with our church and Woodmont Hills Church of Christ to bring together different nonprofits and other groups providing resources in our community to refugees who are settling here in the Nashville area. And our church is doing a lot of work in this area, and we would love for you to learn more about that work and the work happening in our community. And so this morning in the breezeways, you'll see representatives from our RMM ministry. They would love to talk with you, let you know more about this conference. And even if you can't attend the conference, how you can get involved in this important work. And so that's the first one. And the second one, in your bulletin, you'll see there's a little QR code. Uh, we are in the second week of our capital campaign called Together. And in this campaign, you will learn that we are visioning for the future and how we can renew, refurbish, and renovate some of our key spaces for the next generation of ministry. And so today, you'll be hearing a testimony later in worship. We have prayer stations all around the church for you to engage in as you're asking God, how do you want me to respond? And on our website, you'll have all the latest up-to-date information, video walkthroughs of the different spaces, and any questions you have can be answered there or you can click to ask them. So we hope you'll visit that, bumc.net slash called together. And then now as we prepare our hearts for worship, we invite you to stand, welcome somebody here to this place in the name of Jesus Christ and tell them that you're glad you, you've seen them this morning.
Would you please stand for our call to worship? Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise God with trumpet and horn. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Let us now affirm our faith together. We believe in God, maker of all things, provider of all things, and who loves all people. We follow Jesus Christ, in whom salvation has come to us. He sees us for who we are, heals the wounds of our hearts, and makes us new. In his death and resurrection, we see the deepest truth of life. We live by the power of the Holy Spirit, which empowers us for self-giving love. We give thanks for the church, the body of Christ, and for the gift of forgiveness, the power of resurrection, and the mystery of eternal life. Amen.
You may be seated. Well, this morning we have the special privilege and honor to celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. And the sacrament of baptism, through it, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. And all of this is God's gift to us. And today we remember the words of Jesus when he said, Let the little children come unto me and do not stop them, for to them belongs the kingdom of God. And so at this time, we present for baptism Ivy Lou Tomini, along with her parents, Mia and AJ, along with family members and friends. And from the earliest days of the church, baptism has consisted of a profession of faith and historic questions have been asked. So I'm going to ask those questions to you now. Me and AJ, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church of Christ? If so, say, I do. I do. And will you nurture Ivy Lou in a Christian home and in Christ's holy church, that by teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself to profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life. If you will, say, I will. Well, we're so grateful also not only for Ivy Lou, but for AJ, who comes to join this fellowship today as we baptize this precious girl. And AJ, I want to ask you as you make this step in your journey of faith, this question. Will you be faithful along with us, your spiritual family at Brentwood Church? Will you be faithful to Christ through your prayers, your presence, your gifts? your service, and your witness. If so, would you say, I will? I will. We welcome you, sir. It's a joy to receive you. Let's pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit now to bless this gift of water and Ivy Lou, who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Ivy Lou, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to invite family members, if you'll reach out and touch Ivy Lou as the congregation, as we share in this prayer over her. Ivy Lou, may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite you to stand because baptism is not only a family promise, but a spiritual promise that every one of us in this room uh, make to God on behalf of Ivy Lou. And so we want to invite you to respond with this vow, with this promise to God, that we will raise this precious girl in an environment where she will find it natural to receive for herself what her family has received for her today. Join with me, if you will, in this promise. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Ivy Lou, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Amen. And before they're seated, as we sing together in just a moment, I want to invite uh, our children, pre-K and third graders, to come forward as we sing to receive their Bibles this morning.
You may be seated. Today is uh, Bible Sunday, as you can tell. For those here today and those that are joining us online, we are presenting these Bibles to our children as we do for so many years. This is a day we celebrate the children's milestones where our pre-K children of fours and third graders receive Bibles. This has been a very long time tradition at BUMC and we are very excited to present these Bibles to you boys and girls. Not only is this a gift from the church, but it's also an incredible gift from God. And like all special gifts, boys and girls, this gift is to be opened, explored, and enjoyed. So children, as you receive your Bible, we encourage you to make a commitment to spend time in getting to know the Bible, reading the stories, having your parents help you read those stories, learning the scriptures and memorizing, because these are the most important ways that we can learn about God and how much God loves us. As a congregation, let us continue to live out our baptismal vows as we pray for these children in their walk of faith. Thank you. Boys and girls, you may be seated. I started coming to Bumsey about five years ago um, when the Selene Hoffs invited me to come to church with them. So when it was time to go to college, I was applying to my dream school and it was a reach. And so I really put everything I had into applying and to just getting in. Um, and you know, spring rolls around and I got in, I was accepted. And so I was so excited to go and to be given this like purpose and this meaning and this identity um, of being a Barnard student. And when I got there, it just, it was just college. Like it just, it wasn't anything more than that. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't like a new, a new life, which is kind of what I was expecting, I guess. Um, and so I started asking questions about what my identity is um, and what it means, what I believe in. Um, and so that led to asking better questions, deeper questions about Jesus, about a Christ-centered life. So I started talking to friends whose faith I admired. I started talking to adults who I knew had strong Christian values and strong Christian lives. Um, and I started reading books by C.S. Lewis. I started reading books by Sadie Robertson. I made a worship playlist from all the songs I loved from Bumsy. Um, I, I bought my very first, my own Bible, which I had never had before. Um, I bought my first journal and I really just started learning more about who Jesus is and what God's purpose for us is. Not just my idea of like, oh, I got into this school, so I'm gonna be, this is going to be who I am, um, but a bigger, a broader purpose. So I'm heading back for my junior year and I've been blessed enough to be able to find a great group of students to do a Bible study with. And that's been amazing. Um, but I haven't really found a church community and definitely not one like Bumsy. So it's really important to me um, and really valuable that I'm able to stay rooted in Bumsy's teachings and go to services on Sundays, even from afar. And I remember particularly there was one service where Davis said, God comes to us and works in our lives in the strangest places and in the strangest ways. And I was like, I think that's me. Like that's, that's what happened in my life, um, getting to worship with Bumsy from New York was incredible. Thank you, Mary, for that testimony, wherever you are watching from this morning. And uh, we're grateful for the impact that our ministries have. And um, I love this story about her Bible. And, and kids, we, we we're so grateful that you have those Bibles and we hope that you'll open them and read them this morning. And uh, this morning we come with gratitude um, and we also come, many of us, with grief. Uh, if you look in your bulletin, you'll see there's a number of prayer requests there. And we have some additions to it this morning as we enter into a time of prayer. And so we wanna remember the family of Will Wainick in prayer, remember the Nancy and the loss of her son, Elizabeth Pike, Roger Wainick Jr. and Katie Wainick in the death of their brother 
and let you know that visitation uh, for the service will be here from 12 to 2 tomorrow, and the celebration of life will be at 2 o'clock here in the sanctuary. We also remember Jim and Annette Williams in the death of their son, Austin Williams, and Myrtle Wissert in the death of her husband, Bill Wissert. And so let us now go before God in prayer. Almighty God, we've gathered today as people filled with gratitude, sorrow, joy, pain, questions. We've gathered here, near and far, and we give you thanks that you meet us with the presence and power of your Holy Spirit wherever we are. And so we ask this morning, would you heal those who are hurting and give hope to those who are hopeless? Would you help us worship you even in difficult times? Would you guide all of these young people who just stood before us? As they receive the gift of your holy scriptures, would you inspire, challenge, and bless them as they read? And would you help them be a blessing to others as they live out your commands? For we know your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we ask that you would shine your light far and wide today. And may these young ones and may we here in this room remember that your word always points to the eternal word, your son and our savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of today's scripture reading, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Paul, for reading our lesson in grace and peace to each of you in the name of Christ, our risen Lord. Uh, it is wonderful uh, to be right here at the beginning of fall. I felt uh, like we were in the East Tennessee mountains this morning. Uh, it was nice and cool, and we will welcome the fall season as it comes, typically between September 21st and 23rd, I think this year 23rd. Uh, so on Saturday, we will welcome the fall season. Uh, Jonathan, thank you for leading us, and uh, we're thrilled uh, with our pre-K and third grade uh, Bibles and those who have received it. We have many more uh, at the next two services. Uh, some of you who have this tradition in our Wesleyan lineage of receiving third grade Bibles, it goes way back uh, for many of us. How many of you uh, who maybe were raised in the Wesleyan lineage remember getting a third grade Bible? Raise your hand. Wow, that's a lot of people. Um, back when I received mine, y'all remember how big they were? They were about this big. It weighed about, <laughs> weighed about 12 pounds, I think. Uh, in those days, we evaluated one's piety by the size of their Bible. Uh, and it was well used, and these we trust will be well used as well. We're grateful to all of you who are early birds this morning who have received God's Word for you. We're continuing our series that we started last week, six-week series entitled Called Together. Jonathan mentioned this at the top of the service. This series coincides with our capital campaign, which, as many of you know, is proposing to refurbish, to renew, to repurpose uh, three of our 
priority areas, including children's ministry, which is A number one, and to do some work also in our two worship spaces. We started the public phase uh, last week with the announcement of lead gifts. Uh, nearly 60 of our families have already pledged almost $8 million, uh, to date, and we haven't really gotten good and started yet. But we're asking you uh, to, prayerfully, uh, to prayerfully consider a three-year uh, gift to the campaign to make these three areas what they ought to be. And also to remind you that at the point that we hit the $10 million mark, uh, we have a wonderful donor who has offered to match the next $3 million from $10 million. So if we are able to raise $13 million, we'll have $16 million, and we'll be well on our way towards uh, working, uh, beginning hopefully in the new year to begin to work on our site. Uh, in case you don't know, uh, if you'll go to our website, bumc.net, uh, there, is now, there are now three different videos about each of these spaces that run three to five minutes in length, uh, and they are kind of a walkthrough of those spaces with explanation and some renderings that have to do with what's going to transpire in those space by our own master site chair, who is Neil Henson, uh, and also there's a QR code in your bulletin. I hope you won't go to it just now, but there is a QR code that will take you directly to more extensive information. So if you were here last week when we began the series, we talked about the importance of tradition in our future, carrying Joseph's bones, which I think was a metaphor for carrying our spiritual DNA from the past into the future. So in the next five weeks, what we're going to do together is we're going to think about the specifics of what we as a faith community are called to do together. And I want to begin this morning with the idea that we are first and foremost called to worship. Walter Brueggemann, who is an Old Testament scholar, once said, worship is an act of sanity in a world on the edge of insanity whereby we are reclothed in our right minds. I love that quote. It, of course, is no accident that the book of Psalms is right smack dab in the middle, in the center of our Bible. Uh, its location, its placement is indicative of the fact that the primary purpose of our existence is to praise God to worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In fact, the Westminster Confession that is of Presbyterian or origin got it right when they said the chief end of humanity is to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. Praise. It's our native tongue. When you read the Scriptures from beginning to end, particularly Genesis 1, you see that praise and worship is rooted in the creation itself. For example, in Genesis 1, after each phase, after each age or epoch of creation, isn't it interesting that God affirms His own work? After day one, creating all that is, He said, it's good. Day two, it's good. Day three, four, five, good, good, good. And finally, on day six, God takes a handful of clay and breathes breath into it and made you and me. And he said, this is my best. This is very good, affirming the work of God's own hands. Psalm 8, some of you know Psalm 8. It's a life chapter to me. It's a creation psalm where the writer, the psalmist, is reflecting on the creation of humanity on day six. And the psalmist raises the question, what is man that you are mindful of us? What is man that you care for us? And then the psalmist answers his own question, you have made us a little lower than the angels and crowned us with glory and honor. The book of Psalms is chocked full of praise. In fact, did you know that the word psalm in the Hebrew, tehillim, 
means literally, plural, praises. And we often refer, as we should, to the Psalms as the Hebrew hymn book, which contains no less than 150 praise songs that were composed and put to music for the purpose of worship. Now, it's interesting to note that the last five chapters of Psalms, chapters 146 through 150, are often called the Hallelujah Psalms. And look at that word, hallelujah, on the next slide. The word hallel in Hebrew means praise, but the suffix, yah, J-A-H or Y-A-H, is an abbreviation for the name of God, Yahweh. So the term hallelujah, it means praise Yahweh or worship God. And what I want you to notice for just a few minutes is that in Psalm 150, there are three little prepositions that I think are absolutely key to the text. The first preposition is the word in, I-N. Verse 1 says, praise God in his sanctuary. It's what we're doing this morning. The word sanctuary, mishkan in the Hebrew, means literally a place of refuge, a place of safety, a holy place. We need holy space to do what we're doing this morning, to fellowship, to pray, to praise, to proclaim. We need holy space with beautiful windows and beautiful music where we're surrounded by the symbols of faith and the fellowship of the faithful. One of the blessings that happened during COVID when this space was somewhat restricted was the creation of online worship. Each week, still today, we have about 1,000 to 1,200 folks who are with us online. And we've been able, in the midst of this crisis where space was restricted, we've been, we've been able to actually expand our witness and our worship beyond geography. I so appreciated Mary Prestigard's video, didn't you? She's watching this morning from New York. Good morning, Mary, and good morning, Gabe, who is probably with her. Last Tuesday, Casey Orr, one of our associates, shared with me an email from an online worshiper whose name is Joyce. I want to share it with you. I live in Pennsylvania and watch every Sunday. I came across you by chance, although I really believe the Lord led me to you. I'm an elderly woman who lives alone with my dog and bird that I later found out the dog was a pit bull. This is a tough lady. And I've found the Sunday services are just what I need. In addition, sometimes I find the need to have a personal contact with you folks and wasn't quite sure who to connect with and for some reason, Casey, she names Casey, you felt right. If it's possible, I'd like some of the information that is distributed to the congregation. Perhaps this is not plausible, and if so, I'm sorry for the request. But one of the main reasons for this email is to establish a relationship with somebody at the church. I don't know what the church plan is for such a thing, she writes, and I hope you can give me guidance. Sincerely yours, Joyce. Well, Joyce, I want you to know if you're watching this morning that you are a part of the plan. We are so grateful to be even in holy cyber space, even when we're not in the sanctuary. Isn't it interesting to notice also in that verse that the call to worship is not restricted to the church facility, to the sanctuary? Praise God, says the psalmist, in what? In his mighty firmament. Now, maybe you're asking, what is a firmament? And it simply means the sky. It means the cosmos. It's the heavens. It's the universe. And so that little verse implies that every space is holy because all creation is the artwork, the handiwork of God. Wherever God is, 
its holy space. Even the Son of God said, where two or, or more of you are gathered in my name, I, I'm there with you. One of my other favorite psalms is Psalm 139, which sings, praises God for the omnipresence of the Lord. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far shore of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you in the sanctuary, in the firmament. The second preposition I want you to note in this psalm is, is the preposition for. Praise God for what? His mighty deeds and for his surpassing greatness. I think verse 2 speaks of our human need to remember, to recall, and to name the blessings of God. One of my favorite writers, Frederick Beekner, put it like this. We learn to praise God not by paying compliments, but by paying attention. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I am completely oblivious and inattentive to the blessings of God that are all around me. Praise God for God's deeds. This is Psalm 103, by the way. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. And then he names the benefits. Psalm 103, verse 2. God forgives our sin. God heals our disease. God redeems us from the pit. God crowns us with love and mercy. God satisfies us with good as long as we live so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. It's fascinating to me that Psalm 103 is the epicenter of Holy Scripture. There are 1,550 verses preceding Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2, and there are 1,550 verses after Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2. It is the epicenter of the word praise. Finally, I want you to notice the preposition with. Praise God with trumpet sound or shofar, ram's horn. Praise God with lute and harp, tambourine and dance. Don't see much dancing in the Methodist church. Praise God with strings and pipe and cymbals and then emphasizes loud clashing cymbals. And when you read that, you realize how much of our worship is just music. I mean, if you look at your bulletin, it, it starts with the, the, the prelude, and then there's the introit, and then the hymns, the Gloria Patri, the anthem, the offertory, the doxology, the choral benediction, the postlude, which today the postlude is going to be played by a sixth grader, a student of Greg Bunn named Parker Boland, 11 years old. So you may not want to rush out after the benediction. But music, music is worship. It was Beethoven who said, the vibrations on the air are the breath of God speaking to man's soul. Music is the language of God. And then he boasts, we musicians are as close to God as humans can be. We hear his voice, read his lips, and give birth to the children of God who sing his praise. That's what youth choir is. That's what musicians do. Now, I want to say, if anybody ought to understand that music is worship, it ought to be those who are a part of the Wesleyan tradition. When you realize that Charles Wesley wrote, get this, 6,500 hymns during the revival in England. Many of these are in your hymn book. 
But you don't have to have perfect pitch to join in the praise. Another praise psalm, Psalm 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Some of you make noise when you sing, but at least make it joyful. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I remember the story of a choir director in Franklin who was trying to exit a certain choir member who couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. She was unsuccessful, so she did what we typically do when there's a problem in the choir. She consulted with the pastor. And the pastor invited the man to his office and suggested that he might find another ministry, but the man refused, saying, the choir just can't do without me. To which the pastor replied, well, please let me be honest. There are several people in the choir that say you can't sing. Oh, said the man, I wouldn't worry about that. Half the choir says you can't preach. <laughs> but you're not leaving the pulpit. <laughs> Mr. Wesley left us instructions for congregational singing. I want you to hear this. I'm not going to read all seven, but my favorite instruction is number four. Listen to this. Sing lustily and with good courage. Beware of singing as if you're half dead or half asleep. Lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, nor more ashamed of its being heard than, than when you sang Rocky Top. <laughs> That's a loose translation. Praise. It's our native tongue. I have two favorite parts of worship every Sunday. The first is at the beginning when we pass the peace, when you see the fellowship of the saints that's happening. But I think my favorite part of worship is the doxology. When, when we've heard the word, when we've read the scripture, when we've taken the offering, and when Greg on the bench pulls out all the stops on that instrument, and the music crescendos, and it's triple forte, <laughs> and we come to the altar and lift up our offering and our lives before God, and we sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And when we do that for a moment, it seems like Psalm 150 is fulfilled. For a moment, it's like everything that has breath becomes fluent in the language of praise. It is good. It's our native tongue. Praise has the power to realign our spirit with God's spirit. Last word. When we lived in Atlanta, we were there for 31 years, I had the privilege of singing with Robert Shaw. Some of you remember Robert Shaw as what I think was maybe the finest choral conductor of the 20th century. Those of us who sang with him, to be honest with you, we were afraid of him. <laughs> we were in awe of him. If you came in late to a rehearsal with Robert Shaw, you would never forget about it, and he wouldn't either. But my goodness, he could pull the music right out of your soul. And one day, he explained his calling, and this is what he said. Praise and worship is not about skill. It is about the mental, ethical, and spiritual maturity of human life. In a time, he said, when religious and political institutions may lose their vision of human dignity, we become the custodians of these values 
which most worthily define humanity and most sensitively discern God. And we may, in fact, be the only workable program of conservation for the human race. God inhabits the praises of God's people. The writer of Hebrews concludes his book with these words, through Christ Jesus, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. That's our calling. That's our reason for being. And when we do it together, you become a temple of the Holy Spirit. You become a sanctuary, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And this is our praise. And this is our worship. May it be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning as we continue in worship, we have the opportunity to give praise to God uh, through our tithes and our offerings. And so in just a moment, the ushers are gonna come forward and pass the offering plates. And as they do so, we invite you to register your attendance with us online or at the pads on the end of the row that you're sitting on. And this morning, you can give online through the envelopes in the pew back in front of you, uh, through online giving and many other ways. So let us now continue to give praise to God in his sanctuary. John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Psalms 118, 24. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 126, verse 3. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy.
Almighty God, we praise you for these gifts. We pray that they would help others experience your grace and your greatness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to remain standing for our hymn of dedication. And as we sing, if you'd like to come today and make Brentwood Church your spiritual home and your place of mission, it'd be a great joy to receive you as we sing. blessing and benediction. Oh God, we pray that you would teach us to be fluent in praise, that our lives might become a doxology. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.